So uh, good afternoon, Richard, and thank you for having you here at the Blue Art Center, sir. Uh, sir, you are the pre uh, uh, the teacher uh, for the preschool uh, student at uh, in in the U.S. Uh, you've been uh, teaching art for many years, and also you've been uh, coming to Cambodia for uh, quite a number of times already, sir. Uh, being specialized in art, sir, um, especially with young students, uh, I just want to know because when I was young, uh, my parents also put me in art school for a short period of time mm -hmm. and I believe it also changed something inside me I mean uh, you know my, my way of thinking or my way of expressing uh, on paper but of course it's not like deep art it's just like painting or more painting so my, my, my first question is that in Cambodia for young students especially preschool art subject is not that main uh, priority for them to study uh, basically, they will study uh, language first, or or maybe start, you know, from like like academic first, something like that. Art is like a bit further. Mm -hmm. So, for you, do you think that this is, let's say, something that that is good for children, mm -hmm. or should they, you know, like based on your experience, they should they they, they should start learning art uh, from a very early age, sir? Like why? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I've I've found in my career that children naturally produce art. Yes, sir. If you, if you uh, put the materials down in front of them, they will use them. They'll use them spontaneously, they'll use them organically, and they will stay with it. Um, so I feel that art is something that, that we naturally do, that children are naturally drawn to make art. And it's a, it's a very good, uh, it, we use a, a phrase in our, in our profession in early childhood education, we use the phrase age appropriate. Okay, so. In other words, from the ages three to five, their brains are not developed enough to do written language, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to write, that they speak obviously, but they're not, they're not thinking in terms of writing yet. They do what we call early invented writing. They'll scribble, they'll make things that look like letters and look like sentences, copying adults, but they're not really writing. Yeah. But they are making art. They're making art, uh, art is, uh, I feel, after spoken language, it, it, it is a, it's an original, uh, 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 expression of, of a child. They, they will naturally do it. Uh, they will naturally make shapes with their fingers in dirt. You know, they'll naturally pick up a crayon or a pencil and start making marks. Now, it doesn't look, to, to someone that isn't schooled in, in, in observing children's art, it looks like scribbles. It yes, looks right. like just uh, maybe even a waste of time. But, but you, you can see something in, in those art? Do you see something behind those art? I, mean, I, I, I do. Typically, yeah. it's not uh, something figurative. You're yeah. not, uh, okay, I see a, 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 there's a, a, a massive difference between the art of a three-year-old and the art of a five-year-old. Yes. There's a period they learn exponentially. Uh, the original uh, art you see, they, they scribble, they, they'll make marks, they'll make random marks, they'll make lines, they'll make And sometimes they'll get a piece of paper with paint and just literally paint the whole surface with one, col one, one color. Yes, sir. Um, but as they develop, uh, around the age, uh, ha uh, halfway into their fourth year, you start seeing figures, you start seeing trees, you start seeing houses and animals. They do something that we call in the profession potato people. And most children will do this. They draw a, 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 a kind of an oval shape, yeah. and they'll draw things that look like sticks coming out for hands and feet. Yes, and as they age, uh, and particularly with encouragement, and that's my role as a teacher, I, I notice what they're doing and I encourage them. Mostly I encourage attendance. I don't tell them what to draw, but I encourage them to stay with it and, and keep producing. Uh, produce as, many, as much as you feel like you can do. Uh, in my curriculum that I work with is an art-based curriculum. Uh, art is, uh, I feel like it's, it's an original expression and it's a foundation that you build other things like, like language and uh, received information on top of something like that. Uh, we focus on having the child express. We don't tell them what to do. We do focus them. And I'm very much a, I do believe that children shouldn't just run around and that they, they do need focus and they need us they need us yes, as guides uh, so when i describe my curriculum some people that aren't, aren't familiar with it it sounds like we just let the kids run crazy and do whatever yes, they sir. want but our role as a guide uh we, we guide them we tell we, we 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 offer them encouragement we offer them uh, ideas yes, uh, the ideas come through conversation i don't tell them what to do 
But sir, uh, just a bit like further, like you said you're guiding them. And, and mm-hmm. just now you said that, you know, learning art is also about through learning, I mean, learning through experiences. Mm-hmm. So you said mm-hmm. one day you bring them to the cave where mm-hmm. they are like cave mm-hmm. painting, yes. like, you know, mm-hmm. like let's say, you know, prehistoric people, you know, mm-hmm. uh, handprint on the wall. Mm-hmm. And then you allow them to see it. You allow them to play with the material mm-hmm. during the current day mm-hmm. and let them do art. Mm-hmm. So why do you believe that teaching students like that is better than just, you know, telling them, you know, oh, the color, this color is this, that color is that. Mm-hmm. Why do you bring that technique to the students? Sir? And <clears throat> do you think by doing that, I mean, comparing to the conventional way of teaching, why do you think your teaching is like, uh, can, can bring them more, uh, let's mm-hmm. say, abilities? Sir? They're not really ready for direct uh, 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 technique. Uh, they're not ready for direct advice on technique per se. Yeah. Like they won't listen to you for longer periods of time if you're trying to discover or if you're trying to let's say color combinations uh, like 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 uh, you know complementary colors. They're yeah, not yeah, going to yeah. understand that. You, you want to speak in a language that they understand and you simplify it. And uh, for what, what I do if I want to teach uh, complementary colors the paint will be one color and the paper will be another color that are naturally complementary. And then I might mention it. You notice how these look together. How does it look to you? I ask a lot of questions. Uh, We ask so many questions and uh, we feel that asking questions is better than telling. I see. Because it makes them an active partner. They're, 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 you know, as, as a teacher, we, we recognize that we are not peers with the children. I have a lot of it more experience. And I'm le- w- very much less vulnerable than they are. They're, they're, they're emotionally vulnerable, they're psychologically vulner- vulnerable, and they're intellectually vulnerable in a way that I'm not. Because I've, I'm 60 years old, I have a lot more experience. Uh, if somebody uh, t- says something to me that criticizes me, I don't burst into tears because yeah. I've learned not to. I've learned how to be strong and I've learned how to accept criticism. They don't, they don't know how to do that as well. If I, if I, if I criticize a child, uh, you know, quite often you hurt their feelings. Okay. So, you know, but I do, I, I do offer, offer critique. If, and I, I see that there's a difference in myself. I offer critique in the form of conversation and I offer critique in, in, in the form of presenting uh, a natural consequence to something. Uh, you know, for instance, I'll say, you know, we have them clean up their, their, their own messes. Yes. You know, if they, if they knock something over, we have them clean it up because they're learning a life skill. Uh, so, example I used in a talk the other day, I'll say, you know, I noticed that you have your bottle that's close to the edge of the table. Yeah, yeah. Someone could knock it off, and, and then you'll have a mess you'll have to clean up. Mm-hmm. And, and so, but the next time I notice that they put their, I call this the safe space, when, yes, we're, when we're having a meal. I say, I notice you put your, uh, your bottle in the safe space. I, it's not going to fall over. I know it's not going to fall over. And, uh, and they'll take a natural pride in learning and, and being... The, the acknowledgement that they've remembered something that's going to help them. So they are part of the process. They're sir. part of the pro- and very yes, much sir. part of the process. We work as collaborators, but we do acknowledge that we are not peers. The, the child and I are not on the same level. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so on, on the other hand, you know, there's like not, not of course, not a clear, you know, uh, let's say debate or differentiation between the two. But, you know, sometimes people tend to make distinction between, let's say, academy and art mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. one seemingly being more you know like pragmatic mm-hmm. and the other one being a bit more abstract yeah. so some of like the, the the common question like people ask so do you think like by understanding art mm-hmm. you are uh, you can be better in academic or not like like mm-hmm. being a good art like art person will will bring you more academic ability or not so based oh, on your, your understanding. very much so very much so um and, and the talk i gave um the other day I talked about Howard Gardner's eight multiple intelligences, the theory that there's eight different patterns, that, that, the ways a human learn. And you know, for a couple of examples, like some people learn better through uh, written and spoken language. Yes. Some people learn better uh, through uh, uh, numerical thinking, uh, logical and, and numbers and arithmetic. And some people learn better from uh, social, uh, emotional contact, like through, through negotiation processes. And uh, some kids, uh, and, and adults also learn through uh, visual and spatial thinking, which is really what an art center w- will focus on. An art academy would focus on more uh, directly on the visual spatial uh, way of learning. But that comes later, I yes, feel. Yeah. Uh, in our school, we do have uh, 
we, we acknowledge several different pathways to learning, and one might be dramatic play, dressing up like something, pretending you're somebody, a superhero or a princess or a dragon. Another one might be a, a building, using building blocks to make a, make a, a, a wall or a house. Um, and another might be a sensorial explore, exploration, uh, playing with sand, taking taking a, a, a shovel and, and piling up sand. Yes, uh, so we acknowledge that, that the, the, the plastic arts, as you might call them, you know, painting and drawing and such, are not the only way. Mm -hmm. So when we say we're an art base, we include all of the arts. We, we also include dramatic arts and music and, thing, and, and, and things like that. But uh, the, the core of our curriculum does take place in the art studio. And uh, the, the curriculum I use is the Reggio Emilia approach, which was developed after World War II. Uh, and it's art based, it, uh, after World War II in Italy. And it, it's art based, but it, it, the art practice includes many disciplines. It includes talking, it, we, we, we discuss the project beforehand, and the projects that we choose are based on the, the interests of the children. I see. And it does, it, it does happen rather organically. If you see a Reggio Emilia classroom in action, you'll see a process where everyone is talking, not all at once because we take turns talking, yes, sir. and uh, uh, ideas are brought forth. And then we, it, there is, it's, it's a process much like you would see in, in a boardroom, in a, in a business, or a school. Uh, and it's a process that goes on all the time. And so you focus on, on, on a, uh, ideally, on a large-scale, collaborative art-based project based on an interest, and you can you're allowed to go off on, uh, as we say, tangents. For instance, I'll give you an example. Uh, one school I worked at, we we decided to uh, study trees. Study tree, like trees, the, the, the normal trees. tree out there. So we yeah. made a big tree in the middle of the classroom mm -hmm. uh, out of out of uh, paper, uh, out of construction paper, and and it was it went all over. And uh, then we started talking about what 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 lives on trees. Children were asking questions or making observations about insects. So we included some insects. We made some insects to put on the tree. Then we're okay. We started out with trees. Now we're studying insects. And then we moved on to leaves, and then we moved on to what, what we refer to as the canopy, which is uh, when you have a forest, you have a large area at the top. Yeah, you know, in some countries, color, monkeys yeah. live up there, birds live up there. So you're studying birds. You go off in different directions. So before you know it, you're, you're studying biology, you're studying uh, insects, you're studying... We, one, and then we went out into outer space. What's above the canopy? The sky, outer space. So we started studying space. You know, we kind of, we kind of broke off from that tree right. and then moved on. But it was a very organic process. So those are the art that you're talking about. It's not just like, like a command and obedience and, and you know, yes. like yes. strict painting. No, 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 it's, not strict. More. That does come later. Okay. A school like Blue Art Center will want to focus more directly on the pla as we say, the plastic the arts. Yeah, 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 and that will be painting. And uh, my partner, June, who, who uh, gave a talk about the Monart system, that's a very good way of doing it as well for older kids. We're talking about children, they're probably over six, six to 14. And even, uh, even within that age group, if I, were, if I had a school, I, I would separate the classes somewhat. Brought, you know, I would maybe make at least two or three divisions between those ages, between six and 14. Because there is a lot of exponential growth that happens. And in, in the ages I work with, three to five, the exponential growth is profound. Mm -hmm. If you get, if if you spend time in cl working in classrooms with that age, you do you do see the development between the ages three and six. And they're very different people when they start out at three and they leave the classroom at six. They're very different people compared to other students that do not get the same process of learning. No, I think it does happen, uh, e even in curriculums that don't, but I'm just saying, as a yeah. human being, a human child developing between ages three to five, you do, and our job through our curriculum is to encourage that growth. Yes, sir. But that growth will happen uh, regardless. Even children who don't go to school, they will develop, but, but their develop won't go as quickly and without as much guidance and, and focus guidance. Yes, sir, and, and just now, um, you said um, you could understand the society, the health of the society, yeah. mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on the art. Mm -hmm. And also in Cambodia, there's a saying that when the culture dies, the nation dies. Yes. So, I mean, uh, a bit 
very abstract to me as a, mm. I mean, as a young person. Mm. So how do you see like when an art is not healthy? So I mean, what are the indication that you you have learned along the way mm. to observe it? So well, as I mentioned, I think people are, are always doing art. They even do art in the most uh, uh, extreme uh, extreme ways. circumstances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people that at war make art. It's, it's not always it's not always the best practice of art. It's not always art that might be as interesting as 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 a more open, less chaotic society. But people are always creating, and um, I feel that uh, you, as I said, you can tell the health of a society by the, the variety. I, I would maybe put it the variety of art that's allowed, the the, the variety of art that is being produced. Um, in other words, if you see a culture where, uh, you know, I'll cite a specific example, but a culture that is uh, based on a, a dictator, one person, mm -hmm. or a, uh, a king, uh, and all the art is just about the king, mm -hmm. then, then that, that society is not living its full potential. If you see a society where uh, people are allowed to make things about uh, their own personal lives, or th the lives of, of uh, maybe uh, another culture, they can talk about another culture, or, or, or you see a variety of expressions like film and, and, and printed works and paintings and sculptures where, uh, to make an example, where people can do things as, uh, as um, free thinking, as conceptual art. Because yes, many people uh, feel that conceptual art isn't a true art. I, I feel that it is. Uh, it, but it, it's, a, it's a type of art that doesn't necessarily have an object. You're not producing an object. You're, you're 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 producing an idea. You're producing an idea, and so a society that allows something that's that free thinking, I think, is a healthier society, as an example. And uh, and uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, that I, I think that occasionally in the United States, the financial model of something has to be a a, a money maker to have value, but not just a money maker, but to make millions of dollars. You, you know, to, to use the example of film. Uh, America had a more vigorous film culture, I would say, in the 1960s and 70s than it does now. Every every film that comes out has to be what they call a blockbuster. It has mm -hmm. to make multiple millions of dollars to be considered of worth. Whereas in the the the, the 60s, uh, 1960s, there was more of a an idea that you can make a small film, a small yeah, yeah, film yeah. with a big idea that doesn't make as much money, but it has value. Uh, there, there's less thinking that, that there's a lot of thinking right now that something has to make a lot of money at once to be of value, and I think that's as restrictive as as uh, 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 a culture that has uh, uh, you know a, a dictatorship that, that, or something. Yeah, yeah so. I see. So. Mm -hmm. And just so, just now you said you, you've also learned about the, the, the art of Cambodian culture, yes, especially yes. Uh, in the uh, uh, archaeological uh -huh. part uh -huh. of Angkor Wat. So uh, what, do, what do you learn, sir, about, about the art there? Well, the, what I've learned about uh, the art from the Angkorian period, uh, it developed over, uh, developed over the years since I first encountered it in the 1980s. Yes, uh, when I pulled that book out, I had no idea about Cambodian culture, not a mm. single idea about what... Cambodian life was like, what the ideas were, what the history was. But now, many, many years later, I, I've done a lot of reading about it, and I understand that it has a very ancient uh, background, you know, connection to, to India and Hinduism, and uh, then it had the, the period of, of uh, uh, the flowering of the Angkorian civilization, where Angkor Wat was built up to the period of Jayavarman and, and, and uh, Angkor Thom. Then, then there was a period where dark ages. Yeah. Well, yeah. There, something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like a dark ages. Uh, same thing happened in Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, Europe. You had you had Roman civilization that was, uh, to make an example, that that lasted for uh, hundreds of years, and then around the the you know, 500 A.D. or so, there was a tapering off, and they, they weren't. Uh, you know the infrastructure kind of broke up, and yep, the yep. country that separated into smaller political units and cultural units. And yes, same thing with with Cambodia. You know, with uh, the the Angkorian civilization. Uh, so, what to answer your question more specifically, what I've learned when I first pulled that book out has led me to coming to Cambodia twice, to actually mm -hmm. going to Angkor Wat. Yes, sir. In my imagination, my my idea of Angkor Wat changed dramatically when I actually went there in, 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 in person and saw it you know, with my eyes. And uh, 
It's very impressive. Uh, and I th every time I go back, I have something almost like a spiritual experience because uh, I, well, I think of the scale of it. I think of the, uh, the effort to make it, the ideas behind it, uh, and uh, just the physical presence of those temple complexes as you walk through it. Uh, I compare it to when I went to Pompeii in, oh, in, in Naples. Pompeii, yeah, yeah. Pompeii, like Angkor Wat, is like, it's like time travel. Mm. You know, you're, you're surrounded by, by tourists from the present day, but a part of you is going back in time. And at least in my imagination, I can imagine in part what it was like to walk through the, 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 the halls of Angkor Wat back when it was an active temple complex, when people were living there, when, when you had the, the, the Devarajas, you know, the, the, the god kings. Uh, same with Pompeii. It's like Pompeii, you can walk through it and imagine what it's like to be in a bustling uh, Roman marketplace. So is there any uh, specific place of the temple that you like the most uh, or, you know, specific area, for example? Well, <laughs> uh, originally I was drawn to Angkor Thom uh, because of the, the majesty of the heads, the, oh, the, big, yeah, yeah. the big heads. And uh, I think that I I Americans, if they know... If they know a little bit about Cambodia, that they, they associate Cambodia with Angkor Thom. Yes, it's yes. a very photogenic, uh, uh, you know, a place. But but I, as I've developed a more complex relationship with Angkor, uh, I, I look at the little things. I look at uh, the, the 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 little the men with the beards, the ascetics, mm. and I look at the hermit, uh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the hermit, yeah. Yes. And I look at uh, smaller details in the larger. Uh, 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 relief murals. Yep. Like I look at an individual figure, and uh, I, I, I look at the uh, the differences, the the incremental differences between the uh, the um, apsaras. You know, they they look a lot a lot alike at first, but if you look at them, there there's quite a lot of difference. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, as a, as a as a uh, an art, art teacher for young students, mm -hmm. uh, you you've been to Cambodia. I mean, this time, uh -huh. as I was informed. Uh, several weeks already, uh -huh. and you've been teaching a young student in Cambodia also. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of their ab absorbance in, in, in art, uh -huh. can you compare like how different are the Cambodian young student and the American young student? So? I, I typically work with younger children, but I have experience working with the age that they work with at Blue Art Center. Yes, and I would say the Cambodian students uh, have a great, at least based on what I've observed at Blue Art Center, the Cambodian students have a great deal of focus. Yes, sir. They're very, uh, I would use the word serious, but they, they, they don't lose their playfulness. Mm. Uh, they have focus in a way that American students often don't. And I'm not sure why. I don't know. I, I don't know much about the Cambodian uh, teaching system and what it's like from preschool onward. Uh, but I do, I do notice that they have a very different persona yes, at work than they do at play. Because I see them on the break go play and they become different people, mm. at least outwardly. They become more more childlike, more playful. Uh, 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 so yeah, I did notice. I noticed that difference. Um, not that American students aren't capable of focus, but it looks very different. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my last question, sir, is also something that I've been wondering. But it's of, of course it's not going to be like a clear cut answer. So uh -huh. it's a very abstract also. Uh -huh. So being good at art. Is it like because of your, I mean more because, because of your talent uh -huh, or uh -huh. through, you know, the, the practice that you do every day, sir? Which one uh, really brings uh, a person to become more, better in art, sir? Well, I, I think it's both. Uh, I think that, um, and, and I think that, that better and good are very relative terms. Different cultures have a different idea about what good is and what it is to be better. Yes, uh, it depends on the, the, uh, the needs of the culture and the, uh, the attitudes of the culture. Uh, something like Jackson Pollock, where I don't know if you're familiar with, familiar with his work, large scale canvases where he's literally throwing paint, splashing paint, mm. uh, might seem worthless to some people. Like he's wasting his time. Something like Picasso, where you're taking a figure and distorting it and making it look grotesque and comic book like. Uh, people laughed at him for years. They thought his work was worthless. Now, now he's considered a genius, as is uh, uh, Jackson Pollock. So, uh, what it means to be good, I think, is value that, the, or how does the artist feel when he's making the art, mm -hmm. and is it capable of developing an audience? Does that make sense? A bit difficult to understand mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now. So, mm -hmm. what, uh, mm -hmm. please continue, mm -hmm. sir. It's okay. Um, yeah. 
develop an audience. Mm. So, mm. What, what does that mean? I so? think, I, well, develop an audience means are people interested in looking at the work? Okay. You know, it, art doesn't automatically have an audience. Uh, it, people are drawn to it. Like when Jackson Pollock started his, his uh, action paintings, as he called them, people laughed at him. This is ridiculous. What are you doing? And now, years later, he's considered a genius that, that brought a different uh, 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 technique. It's a different way of expressing yourself. That's a broad example. Uh, but to be better at art, I think, it's to, uh, I think people can and should get better at art. I think it's a relative term. I think the way to get better at art is to be serious about it, mm -hmm. to do it every day. So and that is practice. Uh, yes, yeah. what, I, what I tell an art student, a young person to ask me, say, how do I get better at art? I say, do it every day, do it all day, do it till you pass out, till, do it until you can't do it anymore. If you want to get better, you got to work. It's, it's about, uh, it's not um, uh, glamorous, but it's about hard work. It's about applying yourself, it's about being serious about your practice and working hard. So it's both talent and more importantly practice every yes. every day. Sir. There is talent, but I I, yeah. I've, I I personally have encountered artists that, that are that I consider talented, but they don't have anything to say. Mm. And I've and I've seen people that weren't talented in terms of technique, but they have very interesting ideas. So uh, I, I but so to me, good is the artist is serious about the work, and they're willing to work hard at it, and they're willing to find their look look to find their audience. Mm -hmm. Keep okay. their mind open and look for people that are like you, that think like you, and you will find an audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank Richard, you. for the interview. And uh, art, of course, is something that we uh -huh. uh, will try to learn, uh, I mean, like, let's say, eternity <laughs> without end. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for your attentions. Thank you, yeah. sir. Yeah.